All right, and we're back. So we got our camera all set up. So we can watch as this happens. So we're gonna open up the motherboard case, and in it are these two different boxes. One with the motherboard itself. And the other with everything we need to build the computer and connect it. We'll go ahead and get this uh, motherboard out. Okay, so we got the motherboard out. <clears throat> and as I was showing you earlier, we got the four RAM slots, the four PCIe slots. We've got our SATA ports, uh, one through six, and then one and two. And as you can see, some more USB 3.0s on the back, a bunch of USB slots, and uh, this motherboard comes with a built-in audio uh, audio functionality um, for full surround sound, so you don't need to buy an audio card for uh, this particular motherboard. We're gonna go ahead and get our screws to put our motherboard in. Be careful not to lose them. Now you won't use every screw that it comes with. So we gotta set this out of the way for the moment. And I'll show how to connect each of those here shortly. But let's see how many we need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got nine screws and they should match up evenly. And you don't just put the motherboard in there flat against uh, the chassis. You've got these little gold ones that have a, have a male and a female. You're going to put these into the chassis itself. And then you're going to screw the screw in through these into these. And that's going to keep it off of this just a little bit. Um, which you kind of need because of the back solder. Um, if... This, if these were to touch the, the chassis and so were the other ones, you'd, you could uh, potentially fry your motherboard instantly. So that's why you do it that way. But we're going to go ahead and get these going and we will resume once we've got the motherboard uh, secured. Um, just remember that when you are tightening the screws into the motherboard itself, you don't want to over tighten them because you don't want to damage that uh, the, the actual the board itself, um, you can cause problems and, and it's so impossibly difficult to repair that that it would cost you more to have it repaired than it would to buy a new one. So get those ones, the gold ones, into the chassis uh, nice and tight, but when you're putting these ones in, don't overdo it. Okay, so we've got the nine spacers in there. As you can see, there are 11 holes. Um, it's going to be the nine that match up with your motherboard. Um, with the case came some screws like I showed you in the beginning. Now you want to choose <clears throat> the ones that are big enough to fit in the hole and they have enough of a rim that they don't, they can't slide through. Um, some of them are, are smaller and don't make a really good contact with or it's, it's really loose in there. Um, we don't want any play in the motherboard. So we're going to take the little bit bigger ones that fit perfectly through there and don't move around. As you see, they don't wiggle. And we're going to set this on here. Um, just as a side note, make sure that you're not wearing socks and are standing on carpet or something. Because uh, static electricity will fry components. Uh, and your motherboard will be bad before you ever even get it connected. Um, so you see, <clears throat> it lined up with all nine of the spacers. But before we screw the motherboard in, unless you want to end up taking it out later, you do want to put in the back plate first, which comes with the motherboard itself and should look like this. And basically it's just going to fit right on here like this. And it's going to seal in the back of the case 
Otherwise, dust is going to get in there quite a bit easier, and that's a bad thing. So make sure you put this on before you screw the motherboard in. Make sure you don't have any of your cables trapped underneath as you put it down. We're going to back it out a little bit. Place it where it's supposed to go. There we go. Now it should fit perfectly. And looky there. Like a glove. Um, you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, which we have misplaced for the moment. Okay, there it is. Uh, make sure you're not using uh, any type of magnetized screwdriver. Um, some of them that like, it'll pick up screws um, when you touch when you touch them. If it picks it up, do not touch this to your motherboard. Okay, so we've got all nine screws in. As you can see, the motherboard is in there nice and secure. All right, and we're back. Uh, so I've got Sconey Life on Skype. He's going to watch the build and ask questions as we go for things that come up and uh, maybe bring a little more insight to those of you who have some questions that I wouldn't normally cover. He's going to He's going to try and address some of these as he's kind of a noob to building computers. Um, so, Sconey, how you doing today? Not too bad. I just got done running around town, finally home. Going to grind some ARAM and watch you build my baby. Yeah, pl playing some League of Legends, are we? Yeah, I got to get kind of better. So, I, I figured if I master being on a shitty computer, then I get that thing. I'm just going to be a god. At least that's how I'm envisioning it. You know? <laughs> well, that sounds like a great plan. Let's go ahead and build your computer so you can become a master on a great computer. Excited. Okay, so, so far we've covered uh, everything that we're putting in it and putting the motherboard in. Now we're going to do a little bit of wire hiding and installing this front panel of this case. Um, but we don't want to just have these going across and plugging in down here. Um, because it interrupts the airflow, dust is going to collect here, <clears throat> and it's just going to look really sloppy. So, although you can do it that way, um, and if you do avoid hiding them all and just let them come across, which is perfectly fine if that's your thing, uh, make sure that you do clean out your uh, CP or your uh, your case from time to time with some canned air. So we've got this side off. It's as you can see, this is a good place to, to run your wires. Um, basically, we're going to pull them through here and bring them back in down here um, so we can plug them in and they're going to be hidden. Okay, so we're going to run all these. Down through right here. and then figure out which ones need to go where. So, the USB 3.0 connects in right here. So we're gonna go ahead and pull it back right here. Just that way that excess cable isn't just sitting out here. Um, so we're gonna pull the blue back through there. And then each of these 
are going to go into the bottom of the motherboard. So they're going to come in through that bottom down here. Now if you do have a, a slot down here, make sure that you're not going to hinder where your, uh, your power supply is going to be at. So I forgot this right here, um, because of this, we don't even have to uh, run this anywhere. And we will get to that in a minute, but anyways, let's go ahead and get our USB 3.0 connected. There's one. And then, what do we have here? That one goes to that one. Okay, so that's something nice about this case right here. It has a port on the front to plug in an external hard drive. And Sconey just got a four terabyte hard drive. So this guy right here, we don't want to put it in slot one because it's not going to be his main hard drive, but we are going to connect it to the SATA number two. Um, so it'll be a removable external hard drive, or you can leave it plugged in um, as a permanent hard drive. Right here we've got our HD audio. Which goes right here to the audio, as we were talking about earlier. Which is the farthest ones all the way down here is our audio and that'll that's verified in the user manual. Over here we have our LEDs, our reset switch and our power switch. And you want it to where the words or the labels on them are facing down. Um, but it is labeled on here also, so the furthest one is the reset. So we're gonna plug in our green and white reset with a label facing towards the bottom of the case. Right there. The next one, which is our power, goes directly next to that, also with the labels facing downwards. And then the LED, also labeled down, is the next double pair, right there. Now what do we have left? All right, we've got this SATA, the, the hard drive one that we're gonna take back through here. And plug into our number two. It only plugs in one way, so fairly explanatory. But there we go. <clears throat> and then you can pull the excess cabling in through here and when we put the case on it'll all be held just like that. It'll be real nice. Um, it also gives these like this so you can zip tie the cables in which I'm not sure if we're going to do or not but it's a possibility. So here's another one of those fans just like this um, that are going to plug in the same way as that front fan. So we can go ahead and hide these wires also. We're going to go ahead and push that through there. So that one's hidden. Now we can't hide this back fan, unfortunately, just because of where it's at. Um, but we can keep it zip tied or, or whatever. 
and plug it into a fan. And it's a three prong fan. Let's see a good spot to plug it in at. Hmm. Well, you know, might as well just keep it nice and close. Go right here. And it'll only connect one way. Even though there's four there, um, what the fourth one is, is if the fan that you have has uh, control capabilities, uh, basically your motherboard and, and the software that we'll install later uh, allows you to control the speed depending on temperature. Um, but this one doesn't have the fourth, so we just plug it into the three, and it'll only fit on there one way. Um, but it's going to run at a, at a set speed 100% of the time. Whereas we've got fans around here somewhere that have four, and as the temperature increases or decreases, the speed will change, and you can set all of those parameters uh, to what you want. And this is all the processor is, this tiny little thing. But it was a really big box for it, right? Yeah, exactly. It's because it's going to come with your heat sink and fan. Now, the nice thing about this one is it comes with the uh, thermal compound already on it. And what that does is it allows the transfer of heat from the processor to the heat sink um, at a, a great high... Uh, a higher rate than if it was just metal to metal. It's gonna make the better seal. Um, so if you buy one that doesn't have thermal compound, Arctic Silver 5, uh, they sell it at Best Buy. It's it's uh, like nine bucks for this tiny little tube, but it's it's really good stuff. But I'll show you how to install this real quick. Now be careful with these, because you see all these tiny quad little- Quad kill, quad kill, sorry. Quad kill, that's a, that's a great time. <clears throat> You'll see all these gold pins. If you break even one of these, it's game over. You're going to buy a new processor. Be very careful with this. Make sure that uh, you don't have any static electricity built up or anything. So you want to touch something that's grounded, uh, like your power supply or, or the chassis or something. Um, but this will line up only one way with those different uh, little knocks on there. And it should set on there Oop, see we were doing it wrong already goes on there just like that and don't force it like I said if you break even one see there it goes it just it kind of fell in when it got lined up don't push it down its own weight will take it down once you get it in go ahead and close it and that'll lock it in. And then we're going to put our heat sink on there. And it's a pretty neat little design. They're good little heat sinks. I use this one myself. And our fan is going to plug in right there. It says CPU fan on it. And that is one that, as you can see, there's four. It's going to be able to control the speed as the temperature goes up or down. So we're going to set it on there just nice and easy. We're going to get those little grooves to line up onto And when you lock it, it's going to be really a snug fit. And then plug your fan in, and it's only going to fit one way. And there's that. We'll go ahead and stick our, our RAM sticks in here real quick. So you'll see there's a little groove in there. There's a groove in there, so it kind of tells you which way to line up. Get your, uh, make sure that 
These ones shouldn't open, but these ones do. Make sure these are open. And get the bottom lined up and pushed in there. And it'll just kind of slide in. And then you're gonna go back and forth. And you heard it click, and it closed that lock right there. We'll do the same thing for the second. And so we're only putting two sticks in here. We're gonna go ahead and close those just for uh, shits and giggles. But that's that's that. Now the next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and install our uh, graphics card. Now, that there. now we're gonna go ahead and put it in the top one, which means we need to uh, push or get these out so that way it can fit. Now this particular graphics card is going to take up two of these PCI uh, uh, covers on the back. So we're going to go ahead and take off the top two real quick. Okay, so we got those two back cases off. Um, as you can see it opened it up. And we're going to go ahead and take off this little cover. And it's only going to fit in there one way. Um, you can go ahead and leave this one on uh, because we are not uh, putting, setting it up as a crossfire where we're putting another graphics card in right now. Uh, make sure that you have the lock open. And same thing as the RAM, it just line it up in the back over here and set her in there. And as you can see, she, uh, she popped in and it locked itself. Give one last little push to make sure she's good. That looks good. So the same screws that we just took out of there, we're going to go ahead and put back in. Just because they all match that way and we know they fit perfectly. We're going to go ahead and install our power supply real quick. And it's just going to slide in there. So we got the power supply sitting in here. These screws in the back of the chassis should line up with it so we can get it set where it needs to be. Well, I had to talk to you kind of briefly and um, you were explaining to me the different powers and everything. And I was going to get originally, I think it was about an 800 watt power supply, and you told me to go with the, the 1000, if if not the 1050. Uh, like, what's the reasoning behind that? Well, basically, <clears throat> everything that you install on your computer is going to have a different uh, power requirement. And although the 800 would have sufficed for what we have, it would have been, what you would have been using would have been closer to the maximum power capabilities of that power supply. When you use something at its higher uh, capabilities, you wear it down faster. Not only that, but if you decide to expand later, you may not have enough power. Um, if you ever want to do a second graphics card or even a water cooling system, the graphics card that you chose, I believe, takes 120 watts on its own. Um, so going with a little bit higher power didn't cost us hardly anything and <clears throat> it allows for some some expansion later and longer uh, durability because we're not using uh, closer to the maximum capabilities of the power supply. <clears throat> but again, we're not using near, we're not even using 800 watts here. So the 800 probably would have been just fine. Okay, so we're going to take off this front again. And we're going to install the CD-ROM drive. And we're going to put it into, because of the way that we have those wires running from the top, we could, we don't want it to interfere with it, so we're going to go ahead and put it in this bottom slot right here.
Well, isn't that just neat? So this one has these little things. You turn it side, it locks it in. You turn it like this and it pops out. Um, but it has these little knocks in it that are going to line up in this and hold it in place. So we're going to go ahead and remove one. They are on both sides, but we're going to see if we can slide it in there real quick without removing the other side. Nope, we're going to remove the other side too. Okay, we're going to get it pushed right in there. And then we've also got to take off one of these front grates. The same one that correlates to the, the spot that we're going into. And as you can see, it lines up to that. We'll push this back on for the moment so we can get our location. And we're going to put what we took off a minute ago back on and lock in so it'll hold that drive in place. Yeah, these are these are a nice little uh, functionality thing of it. You don't have to screw that CD-ROM drive in. That's really nice. I like those. And then we're gonna connect this over here. This is gonna be our power and our SATA. All right, and we're back. So we went ahead and put the uh, hard drive here where it uh, where it belongs, I guess. And we screwed it in on both sides, front and on the back. Um, it would have been nice if it fit here just because we could have stuck it into the back for uh, the cabling, but no biggie. Anyways, now we're going to go ahead and take care of the power supply and plugging everything in. So we're going to get this untangled real quick. And we still got Scony Life on the phone with us. You still there, Scony Life? Sure. Awesome. Alright, so we got this all untangled. Anyway, so here's that 24 pin that I was talking about. Um, supplies the main power to everything. So we're gonna go ahead and... There's really no no good way to hide that one. So we're just gonna get it in there for now and see if we can't zip tie it out of the way in a little bit. Alright, it seems to be in there nice and snug. <laughs> Next up we've got a 8 pin. And this one is going to power our graphics card. Oop, I'm sorry, the 6-pin is what we need. And that'll power our graphics card. And there she is, as you can see. And there's a second 6-pin that comes off of this one, so you can power the other graphics card if you do a crossfire setup. Um, we're all going to go ahead and connect that one. <clears throat> and then we have our 8 pin which goes all the way up here to the top and again no good way to, to hide that one unfortunately or to, yeah, to make that one real neat so we're just going to go ahead and uh, plug her in And that's kind of the problem, is these wires in here, they're, 
they're going to collect dust over time. Uh, so just taking a canned air to, to spray them off, wipe them off, whatever, um, will help keep the heat down in there. And dust can cause problems in electronics. Um, it'll cause shorts between pins and and could really, like I said, cause some problems. Let's see what else we got here. So we got power for our fan up front, um, which we're going to go ahead and put that one through the bottom of the chassis and bring it um, up near here so we can plug that fan in. Um, this fan is already plugged in. This fan is already is going to be plugged in in the back. Um, but this one's right here. Because of location, there's no good way to hide these. There's one. And... Yep, there's two. And it looks really messy right now, kind of like a rat's nest, but we will, like I said, take care of that in a minute. Next, we're gonna go ahead and hide this one so we can plug in that those fans up front. And the other one. Okay, got those fans good. And here in a minute we're gonna zip tie all those to the chassis so they stay nice and tight. But before we do that, whoops. We're gonna go ahead and connect our hard drive and our CD-ROM drive to those SATA ports. Now the motherboard comes with these as you can see um, some of them are at a 90 degree angle and the other end is straight some are straight to straight it's just uh, kind of where the location is if you have any tight angles and personal preference so let's go ahead and get in there We're going to do the 90 degree angle to the hard drive since it's right next to where it's going to be connected to. They only fit one way, so make sure you're lining them up correctly. And make sure that you have nice, uh, solid connections that they're plugged in all the way or when you boot up, it's not going to recognize everything. And you can hear it click in there. Go to this other one, which is our CD-ROM drive. You hear it click and it's good. Okay, now we're going to get all these wires tuck, tucked in down here. Since there's not much we can do with them, we're just going to try and tuck them so that way it all is just in the same area rather than kind of all over. Um, we could zip tie them all to right in here, but they're not going to move because you don't transport your desktop around anywhere. But just to go over the check real quick, we've got our motherboard, we've got our CPU and our power supply, our 
uh, heat sink and fan. We've got our RAM. We've got our fans plugged in. Hard drive, or I'm sorry, graphics card and power to it. Power supply plugged into everywhere. Um, we've got our front panels plugged into where they go. CD-ROM drive to the SATA and the power. With the hard drive to the SATA and power. And make sure that when you moved all that, that you didn't get any anything loose in there. Make sure they're all still connected, nice and nice and snug. Um, that takes care of the inner hardware. <clears throat> and we don't want all that excess cabling to be on the inside. We'd rather have it back here, so we're going to pull those in here real quick. Goni's computer is now built and we're going to go turn it on, install the operating system and start getting all his software downloaded. Um, if, you, <laughs> if you have any questions about anything that happened or if you're using <clears throat> different components or, or if you need uh, any troubleshooting help, Feel free to ask, leave a comment, or uh, send me a message on Twitter at his pet monkey. Uh, that's monkey with a U. And I'd be more than happy to help if you'd like me to build you a computer. Um, send me a message and we can discuss it. Uh, this one right here cost in total about somewhere between eleven and twelve hundred dollars, and that's without a uh, without a monitor. Um, that did include everything that I showed in this video. Um, including the operating system, the keyboard and mouse, um, the case, absolutely everything needed uh, to build what we just built <clears throat> is included in that price. Um, we can bring the price down. Um, you may lose a little performance or uh, go with different brands or whatever, but um, this is the computer that I use. This is the computer that I recommend. I love Asus. Um, I have tested each of the uh, pieces of hardware that are in here and they're reliable, great performance, um, a pretty fair price for, for what they are, and, and definitely uh, I, I would put my endorsement on it if my endorsement mattered. So Asus is a great company, they know what they're doing, they've been doing it a while, and they put out some, some really great stuff. Um, but yeah, leave a, leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video.